This is another uh, patient update, another success story uh, that we have of a, in this particular case, uh, I just recently received an email from this patient. She is now in her third trimester. Things are looking very, very good. And this is why I'm bringing up this case. This is a story of a, a young woman who basically was diagnosed with premature ovarian failure two, three years before even coming to us. And multiple doctors telling her that it was basically impossible for her to get an egg and have a baby using her own eggs. Miss C came to us about two, three years ago. She had been diagnosed with premature ovarian failure. She was not getting her periods. The only way she was getting her periods was with medications to, to artificially give her a period. Her FSH at one point was over 80, follicle stimulated hormone over 80. And once again, even a conservative diagnosis of menopause is an FSH over 40. So Miss C came to us with, with the hope that we could do something. I mean, when I get these cases, um, I'm hoping for a miracle, but I'm not necessarily expecting a miracle. But we, we try to do our best to see what we can do to make that miracle happen. So in this particular case, she came in, we saw her baseline. She had been on hormones and her FSH was still over 40, which these hormones are supposed to suppress FSH. Uh, so in this particular case, we tried to do our best to try to create a good environment. As I was talking to you in, in past, um, this is basically, you know, we're hoping that there are seeds still in the soil. We're going to try to water and fertilize the soil and hope that something sprouts. So in this particular situation to optimize the soil, we need to bring the FSH down. We need to bring it down to more optimal levels that are better for egg development. There's many different medications that can be used. Estrogen, progesterone, antagonists, Lupron. I prefer using birth control pills just because it's very simple and straightforward and they work pretty well and, and very inexpensive. So we, we tried what I call a suppression stimulation. We're suppressing with the hope that it will stimulate an egg. And after about three months of suppression stimulation, we suddenly saw her estrogen rise. We decided to do ultrasound. We noticed that a follicle was developing and we went ahead and did an egg retrieval and we were able to get an egg. We fertilized it, it created an embryo. And what we did at this point was freeze the embryo on day three. I was not confident that I would ever get another egg out of this patient. So I was not, I was very wary of, of being very aggressive and pushing this embryo to blastocyst. I, ju I just didn't want it to have an accident happen. Uh, now, obviously this is only one egg. It doesn't guarantee anything. Even in the best case scenario, a young 30 something year old, a day three embryo might give you 15% chance of success. So we tried to get another one. We took a whole year of trying to modulate her FSH and create a beautiful environment. Eventually we were able to get to an egg retrieval, but unfortunately when I did this egg retrieval, I could not get an egg to come out. It not a, uh, it's not surprising because after a year, what is the quality of that egg going to be like? And if the quality of the egg is not good, it's not gonna come out. But Miss C was not ready to give up. So she, we tried a little bit longer. Fortunately, it seemed that this one egg retrieval seemed to open up things. And we were able to perform another egg retrieval in about a month later. And this egg retrieval, another egg, created an embryo. Against my advice, Miss C decided to push this embryo to five days to blastocyst. And it made it, and we froze it. We didn't do the PGT that you always hear about testing the embryo because we're, you know, there was the concern, will the biopsy actually damage the embryos? But the five-day embryo gave her 100% higher predictability of success at that point. Now, she was not done. You know, two embryos doesn't guarantee anything, so we tried this a little bit longer, but after six months, you know, she became antsy and wanted to go to the embryo transfer. Now, the with the embryo transfer, uh, to go into a little bit of detail, because this was only two embryos that we're working with, we decided to be very aggressive. We cleaned out her uterus. We didn't even bother looking at what, doing a saline ultrasound to look at the uterus. We said, look, there's only one or two chances. Let's clean out that uterus. Make sure that we never have to worry the uterus is going to be what, what causes failure. We also did testing of the uterus, uterine lining through what we call a mock cycle. And we did something called an endometrial receptivity array to make sure our timing is ideal. 
The last major issue with Miss C is that her, she had Hashimoto's thyroiditis. She had an autoimmune disease of her thyroid. Probably was the reason why she was in this condition of uh, diminished premature ovarian failure. Her, auto, her immune system, for some reason in the past, uh, reacted to perhaps a virus of some sort and overreacted, destroying not only her thyroid, but also her ovarian tissue. But her antibodies were still elevated. We were worried about her immune system being overreactive and rejecting the embryo. Because of that, I was hoping that we could delay things and let things normalize, but she really wanted to go forward. So what we did was we gave her medications to try to suppress her immune system, steroids, blood thinner, and we went ahead and did the transfer. Because I'm not sure what was gonna happen, she's never been pregnant. We started with the less predictable embryo, the day three embryo, and it worked. And she was pregnant, the pregnancy progressed well. She ended up getting chromosome testing of the baby at about uh, in her second trimester, everything is normal, and she's now in her third trimester on her way to hopefully a beautiful delivery. In this particular case, once again, it's all about creating a good environment for egg development. And then in this case, just hoping, hoping an egg develops and, and lo and behold, it did.